Popularity. What is it made of? How does a person get to be popular with lots of people and have a few close friends, too? Let's watch and see what makes people like one person and not another. Hey, Jerry, there's that new girl in our math class. Oh, yes. Her name's Carolyn Ames. She's a swell kid. Why? Do you know her? Not very well. I wish I did. I don't know what it is, but there's something about her you like. Well, she always looks nice to start with. Yeah, especially when you compare it with some of the weird characters in this place. Mm. Yoo-hoo! Jenny thinks that she has the key to popularity, parking in cars with the boys at night. When Jerry brags about taking Jenny out, he learns that she dates all the boys, and he feels less important. What about Jenny? Does that make her really popular? Do the boys and girls like her? Is she welcome to join this group? Hi, Betty, Ellie. You can rest your tray here, Jenny, for a minute. Thanks. Say, Wally, how's the play coming along? Oh, okay, Jenny. Here, Jenny. No, Thanks, girls Jerry. who park in cars are not really popular. Not even with the boys they park with. Not when they meet at school or elsewhere. Nothing like being Miss Popularity. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Meow, meow. Okay, Ellie. Now, there's a girl that'd really get my vote. Let's ask her over, huh? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Ellie. Why not? Now, why do they invite Carolyn to join their group when Jenny wasn't welcome? Is it because they like the way she looks and dresses? Because she seems as interested in girls as in boys? Because they've heard no scandal about her? Yes, you know everybody, don't you, Carolyn? Hi, Hi, Hi I'm Carolyn. Carolyn. Well, I've seen you around. I don't Betty care. Richards, Carolyn Ames. Betty's leading our class play. Oh, yes. I looked in on your rehearsal yesterday. We're all in on it in one way or another. I'm on the costume committee. And Jerry and I are stagehands. Hmm, two among a dozen or so. How about you, Wally? Where do you fit in all this? Oh, I'm a one-man team that does a job with no glory attached. I gather the props together, and boy, what a headache. You sound like you need a helper. Could I lend a hand? Would you? I mean, would you really? Sure, I'd like it. I don't know anything about props, but I could learn. Oh, I need some help, too, Carolyn. Hey, lay off. I saw her first. <laughs> See, we ought to get together and talk over those props a little. Could you meet me backstage at 3.15? Oh, that'd be fine, Wally. See you every Monday. I think maybe I'll take Carolyn to the dance Saturday night. Well, better go ahead and ask her. We could work out a double date. Ah, Saturday soon enough. Hello? Oh, hello, Wally. I, I was wondering if you'd like to go to the Strand to see a movie Saturday night, and then go over to Teen Town, maybe. Or if you'd rather go with the gang on a skating party and weenie roast, we'd have to leave earlier for that, though. But we get home at a decent time. Oh, the skating sounds like loads of fun. Wally has used a lot of common sense in putting the invitation this way. It shows he has thought about what Carolyn might like. And he has implied his price range, so she will have some idea of what he can afford when she makes her choice. Carolyn likes it better this way, too. It's doing the girl no favor to leave it entirely up to her. It puts her on a spot. All right, Wally. On Saturday at 5, then. Bye. Well, that phone call didn't go on for hours. A pretty sensible attitude toward telephone conversations. Carolyn keeps a date calendar. Not a bad idea. She'll never have the embarrassment of forgetting a date or of being ready an hour too late. Hmm, that's a good note to write yourself, any night, but especially when you're getting ready for a date. There, you too can do a manicure, Ellie. I might even know what to wear it with tonight if I only knew if Bill's dug up transportation to the dance. You sure he knew to phone you here at my house? I told him three times. I'll have to be getting home to dinner pretty soon. 
Take my advice. Think twice before you start going steady. Don't you ever go out with anyone else at all? Nope. Well, don't you ever want to? On nights like this, I do. I never know what he's planned. He just says, will you decide, Ellie? <laughs> I should think you'd run out of ideas. Well, I'm getting to that point. Hello? Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, the props are coming along all right. That's good. Hey, Carolyn, how about a date? Well, uh, I don't, I don't know, Jerry. When did you have in mind? Well, what are you doing tonight? I'm awfully sorry, but I have a date for tonight, Jerry. Tomorrow? No, I'm sorry. Well, call me early next week, Jerry. Okay, Carolyn. Thanks a lot, just the same. Goodbye. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Ellie? He wanted a date for tonight. Sounds like you're asking her so late went over like a lead balloon, brother. Maybe so. Well, let's see what else we can do about tonight. No, it isn't too promising for Jerry. But after all, it's no compliment to any girl to call her so late she thinks she's a very last resort. And sometimes a girl likes a chance to get ready for a date. Yourself. Gee, look at you. All, all ready and right on time, too. That's a good deal. Thanks. Mother, are you busy? I'd like you to meet my father. Dad, this is Wally Johnson. Well, hello, Wally. How do you do, Mr. Ames? Here I am, darling. And I suppose this is Wally. That's right, Mrs. Ames. How do you do? Well, it's nice meeting you. Oh, excuse me a second. I forgot my scarf. I'll be right there. Don't let me interrupt your eating, Mr. Ames. Well, thanks, Wally. I was just looking into the world of events before we go to dinner. I tricked him into taking me out tonight. I understand you're having a little trouble with the props or the play. Oh, not too many now. Much as I hate to admit it, though, Carolyn has hunted down a lot of things that we couldn't find any place. Here I am, all set. Oh, Carolyn, I made some brownies today. Maybe you and Wally would like some when you get back. There's some milk in the icebox, too, isn't there? How does that sound? Gee, that sounds good. We'll take you up on it, Mrs. Ames. Thanks. <laughs> Carolyn and her mother have found one way a girl can repay a boy for entertaining her. A bite to eat at her house will save him money. Perhaps they'll bring another couple home with them. That would be fun. Folks know when we'll be home? We'll be home before 11, Mother. Wally and Carolyn are saved the embarrassment of the argument about coming in at night. That was settled before Wally arrived. The hour was decided after considering such things as where Carolyn and Wally are going on their date, whether tomorrow is a school day, and how many dates she has had recently. Do you have your key, dear? The family knows Carolyn will stick to her word. All right. Have fun, you two. I'll take good care of her, Mrs. Ames. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wally felt at ease with Carolyn's parents and will be eager to return to her home. They liked him, too. <laughs> <laughs> he is proud to be with Carolyn because she looks well, is friendly with everyone, and is considerate of their feelings. She likes him for these same reasons and also because he is fun to be with. Home, parents, and personality all help boys and girls to be popular.